my name is Shanna Dunn. Um, I'm with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service, and I am the wetland conservationist, soil scientist for uh, Corpus Christi area, South Texas area. My name is Taylor McCumber, and I'm the range management specialist for the southern part of Texas. So the purpose of this demonstration is to show how cover reduces or does not reduce rainfall impact and how it allows for infiltration or runoff and how this affects soil health. We have a rainfall simulator and in this scenario we are going to show a very highly intensive rainfall event and how they affect each scenario. Our first scenario we have a rooftop. Our second scenario, we have a conventionally tilled plot with no cover. Our third scenario, we have a reduced tillage plot, and you can tell that there is some soil cover, there's some residue that's left. Our fourth plot is a lightly grazed rangeland scenario. Uh, so what we have here is a rainfall event. And of course, as you're seeing, We've got the rooftop right here, and auto automatically, really, we are seeing runoff from that rainfall. And on our second plot, we have the uh, crop land, which is conventional pillage, no residue, and wow, look at that. We have already got a... Okay. And then our third plot has is the uh, crop land with residue left, and then, of course, you can see our fourth plot is the... Uh, Lightly gray. Okay, so we've already had our rainfall running, uh, I don't know, probably about five minutes or so. And uh, so what we have here to reintroduce our plots, we have the rooftop, which is just a shingle, uh, simulated shingle rooftop. Our second plot is our conventional till with no residue. Our third plot, of course, is it is tillage, it's cropland, but with residue left. And then our fourth one, of course, is a lightly grazed range pasture uh, type scenario. So now what I want you to key in on is we're gonna look at the I mean, the runoff from these. Now the runoff is gonna be key because remember what you see on the surface, that, that it really impacts the water quality of how much, of, of if anything runs off and if anything actually stays into the ground, actually gets into your soil profile because that's where we want it. So here in our first uh, plot, of course, like I said, we had the uh, shingle roof and we've got lots of runoff. And it's fairly clear, but lots of runoff. So for our second plot here, ooh, look at this. This is some nasty looking stuff. This has got a lot of not just water runoff, but it actually took a lot of the soil particles with it. So you can see that, you can see that it's really dirty. So that actually runs off and you're taking a lot of that fertile soil with it, with every runoff event. So here in your third plot, like I said, we had more residue and you can see that the color is different. It is still dirty, but it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot, it is clearer. We don't have as much soil sediment. We do have some other larger particle sediment that has runoff in it. And you look at the amount. There is a lot less amount of runoff from the uh, cropland with residue than the cropland without residue. So there's already a, a benefit that we can see right here, just in the runoff. And then of course our last one, well, this one, actually, this is the best, of course, out of all of them. Uh, during this particular rainfall event, we really didn't have any runoff. So we're hoping that uh, actually a lot of it is still within the soil profile and it was able to infiltrate. Mm -hmm. One thing I wanted to point out was, look how dirty this white black splash is behind this conventionally tilled cropland scenario. So without cover there and something to dissipate the energy from the raindrop that's moving at about 20 miles an hour, it hits the soil surface, explodes the soil particles, and also creates a compaction at the top of the soil surface.
show you are the results of the infiltration. So we've shown you the results of, of a downpour, uh, and we've shown you the results of the runoff. So let's look at what's actually happening. So if we didn't have a lot of runoff, where did this water go? Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's all within the soil profile. And one way of, of uh, looking at this is going to be our little buckets that we have behind. So, of course, we have our first one here with the, uh, the asphalt uh, shingles. And, of course, we hope, if there's not a leak in our roof, we hope there's no infiltration. And, of course, no, uh, that bucket is dry. So we go to our other ones. So, first of all, we have our conventional till. And remember, we had a lot of runoff. Oh, but look at this. We have very, very little infiltration. Hmm. Well, we're going to look at that one a little bit closer in a few more moments. Okay, so our next one here, we have our uh, tillage with some residue and... Oh, we do have some infiltration. It's not all that dirty. It is a little dirty. But we do have some. Okay, all right, and then our last one here is our grazed rangeland. Oh, and look at how pretty this is. Look at this. We did have infiltration, and look at how clear this is. We didn't have any runoff, but we did have infiltration. So now we compare these. What are we actually seeing here? Well, we're seeing the water. As Taylor has already explained, we're seeing the water, the raindrop actually dissipate. It actually slows down that rain, and it actually allows it to soak into the soil profile. So whenever you have cover, that is the benefit of cover. Okay, we want to armor the soil. And by armoring it, like I said, it allows for more water to infiltrate in your soil profile. As compared to the other two that we have, we have a little less, but this residue does slow it down, slows it down a little bit more, and we do get some infiltration, but again, we don't have any. It really didn't slow down, it didn't dissipate that water, that runoff at all, and the majority of it did end up running off. What we have is uh, we're actually going to go up beyond what we've seen on our runoff, and we're going to actually look at some of our infiltration so we can see the infiltration that's gone through the soil profile and it's come out in our buckets here. But let's actually have an opportunity to look at what's in the pan here. So Taylor is going to flip over. This is the one, the conventional till with no residue on it. So go ahead and flip that over and let's see what we have. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to go ahead and flip over this one. This one is the, uh, the tillage with some residue. All right, so what we're looking at here is we can see this one with the residue actually helped collect the water slow it down and it allowed it to soak into the soil profile and this is all very very moist very moist so and it's all evenly moist and of course in this uh, infiltration bucket we did have some infiltration okay now this one over here this is the one that we had no residue hardly anything to slow down the water to actually uh, let it infiltrate and what we can see, we do have, ooh, we do have water, but um, what I'm seeing for this soil structure, it is just mud. It is just caked together. There is no structure. There is nothing. This is just like mush. So part of this comes from the tillage tearing apart the structure, it cannot, cannot hold the soil aggregates together, therefore it cannot, look at that, it is just falling apart, it's just like a mud pie. 
So the disturbance and the lack of, oh, there's a dry spot there. So there's some dry spots too. So that residue does not stop. Again, it doesn't stop the rain and it just rolls right on off and you don't get hardly any water in your soil profile and that's where you need it. You need it in that soil profile to activate the nutrients to get your grasses to grow. So this one is very pretty. It's got good structure. It holds together very good. Okay, so along the lines of the, uh, the soil health and uh, the demonstration that we've just shown you today, uh, along these lines, your infiltration actually helps uh, not only with the structure, but then the structure actually is a relation of the organic matter, um, the amount of organic matter that you have in the soil profile. And of course that goes back to part of your nutrient cycling. Whenever you have the water, the moisture in your nutrient cycling uh, that allows for that organic matter then to be broken down and distributed amongst your soil profile in your particles and then coats, uh, attaches on to your soil particles and it allows for your better structure, uh, your improved structure. So what we have here in this one, of course, that uh, was the no-till, or excuse me, with the conventional tillage and uh, no residue, you know, we just, there is no structure. Um, and we can tell just by looking at the structure that uh, it really is, it's lower in organic matter that helps bond it together. Keeping the soil covered, or otherwise known as armor the soil, as Shanna indicated earlier. So as a farmer or rancher, bacteria is important for you. All microbial activity is important for you under the soil. And so whenever your soil temperature reaches 140 degrees, you're killing it. And so having something to cover the soil, keep that soil temperature down is very important to you. Minimizing soil disturbance. That's another thing Shanna covered earlier. Physical disturbance such as plowing or overgrazing can result in bare ground and compaction that will disrupt soil microbial activity. So reduced tillage, proper grazing management and pastures will keep the soil covered. Diversity. The more diverse you are above ground allows for a more diverse community underground. Living roots. Soils are most productive when soil microbes have access to living plant material. A living root produces food sources for beneficial bacteria and promotes symbiotic relationships that can be achieved with cover crops. And if you can, or where you can, integrate livestock grazing. Soil and plant health is improved by grazing, which recycles nutrients through improved manure distribution, reduces selectivity, and increases plant diversity. Mm -hmm.